For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. <sighs> I'll make my own decisions. What a stupid thing to say. Okay, technically that's actually correct, but I think we're using the wrong perspective to think about this. I'm going to read the chapter to us out of the NIV. Here it is in context. What advantage then is there being a Jew or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, the Jews have been entrusted with the very words of God. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every human being is a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I'm using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's trustful truthfulness, someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as some slanderously claim that we say, let us do evil, that good may result. Their condemnation is just. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace, they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we became conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justified those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. But of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. The text seems to point to the fact that the Jews were trying to say because they had the law, they had privilege over Gentiles. But they're actually being informed that God doesn't play favorites because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And he's pointing out that we are all in need of a Messiah. All of us alike, because we all fall short. Do we even realize that we've plucked this 
out of the middle of a really long sentence. Did you realize that? Has anybody ever pointed that out to you? That you're taking the middle of a sentence and quoting it on a completely different topic than most of us are actually using it for? We seem to be using it to make excuses because we've all sinned and we all fall short. It seems like we're just making excuses for our failings and our bad behavior. Well, okay, yes, I messed up. But we all fall short of the glory of God. That's okay if I was nasty or lost my temper. No one's perfect. We all fall short. Are we trying to soften the fact that we do bad things? Are we using it as an excuse to a lot for temper tantrums? Is it possibly a way to kind of make ourselves feel better about our bad behavior that we just displayed? Well, yesterday I went to the store. There were some long lines and we were all standing there for not really that long, just a few minutes. And a manager, and as we kind of piled up, a manager came over and said, uh, we just opened another register next next door, and uh, why don't we get some of you guys to move over? And I was the next one up to move over, and a couple that had just walked up cut me off and just walked over there and took my spot. Now, I looked at them and I said, oh, usually we go one at a time and whoever's next would go there. But Merry Christmas. This is my gift to you. Unfortunately, I was being highly facetious and nasty and I didn't actually mean what I had said. The couple didn't even look at me or respond in any sort of way. And unfortunately, bothered me even more and so I kept going and I sang tis the season to be rude fa la 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 at the top of my lungs <sighs> well I looked like a fool they didn't react they didn't look like a fool. When I got home, I was putting the groceries away and I felt really stupid and bad about it. And I kind of consoled myself a little. Well, we all fall short. And then I started thinking about it. Hold on a second. Yes, we all fall short. But was I excusing myself? In saying that to myself, was I just trying to make myself feel better because I was feeling convicted? I decided to sit in that conviction instead of brushing it off. Because if I don't understand my need for cleansing and my need for forgiveness, it's just words. I say, Lord, I'm really sorry for that. Forgive me, please. And then what happens the next time I go to the store and somebody's rude? Does my mouth start going off again? All nasty and snarky? Do I look like a Christian? No, I don't look like a Christian. I look like a jerk. Maybe we need to stop excusing ourselves with, well, we all fall short and no one's perfect. And instead, contemplate it. And maybe, just maybe, next time I'm up against that situation, I'll shut my mouth instead of 
going on and on and on because believe me I went on and on and on here's another thing what if there's a reason that they didn't respond did they even speak English here's something that I didn't tell you the lady was pregnant pretty pregnant what if she just needed to get home and she saw that line as oh, this is my way to get home faster and here I was singing changed Christmas songs at them wearing a Christmas shirt thankfully I didn't have this one on Jesus is the reason for the season that would have told them I was a Christian and that would have made Christians look bad and we don't need any help from people like me looking bad we already get a bad rap sometimes and our bad rap might possibly be one of the reasons for the rash of deconstruction going on right now instead of blowing it off and saying oh i fall short i'm not perfect i'm human instead maybe i should sit on this and let it sink in does it need to sink into you too hit the like button subscribe and click the bell we'll see you next time blessings we were made to love we were made to give the reason why we're here the reason why he gave us life we were made to show the love of christ we know this is why we're here this is why he gave us life so let his love shine through in everything we do it's all for love